Hey everyone, this is John Dickinson from motionworks.net back with a short Cinema 4D modeling tip for you. I've been working on this Beretta handgun and I'm really happy with the progress. Most recently I've been focusing on the slide and I've been cutting in the detail into the slide. I wanted to talk to you about this area here because this is probably one of the trickiest parts of the actual model. You can see from the reference image that the slide is obviously a separate piece of geometry to the frame here but you can see that both pieces lock in nice and cleanly and gives you this nice smooth curve all the way down through the two pieces of geometry so this could have been attacked by modeling all of this as one thing as one piece of geometry and then splitting these off into two separate pieces of geometry I actually started with the frame and then I moved on to the slide so as two separate pieces of geometry and instead to keep this nice and even, you can see I've used a third piece of geometry. In this case, it's down here. Let's see, just close my spares. This one here, my shrink wrap map. Just a nice curved plane that I can use to shrink wrap onto. And I've shrink wrapped this top part of the frame and also the back part of the slide let me just hide that. So there it is there. You can see it's not actually joined to anything yet. It's actually separate. But by using the same piece of geometry, this shrink wrap map, and then shrink wrapping onto it, I can ensure that I've got a really clean transition between the slide and the frame. So I hope that makes sense. Trying to shift these um, points around without shrink wrapping is just a ridiculous waste of time because you end up with lumps and bumps and you'll never get it completely smooth. And you can see I've had to cut in, let me just solo that. I've had to cut in this shape here as well. This is all quads. And I was only able to cut that shape in while this was under a shrink wrap because every time I add a cut, I mess up that nice smooth curvature. And I actually did this step before I cut in all of the detail. This detail here for the decocker. And cutting in this detail up here for the rear sight. I set this up before I added any of that. But you can see I didn't actually attach it to the slide. I've kept it live. And that was, um, and that was very deliberate. And this is what I wanted to talk to you about. Because I knew that if I was going to cut in more detail into the slide, then most likely I would be adding more edge loops. And I would need to integrate those edge loops into this back face. And if I start adding more edge loops, once this is no longer under shrink wrap, then of course I'm not going to keep that beautiful curved shape. You can see, for example, here, here's an edge and I haven't propagated that across through here. If this piece of geometry was attached to the main slide and I cut that edge loop in, I could use preserved curvature and slide something up and that would most probably work. But it's much better to keep it or to keep the shrink wrap live as long as possible until I know that I've got all of my edges in and then attach that to the slide and then add those edges in under shrink wrap and then collapse that down into one piece of geometry. You can see I've got a couple here as well. And I've got these sharpening ones here. These aren't so important. But as far as the other ones go, let me just turn on this. I basically selected the slide in point mode and made sure that I've got polygon snapping on and I've just sort of snapped these to the shrink wrap map and then I've come through and I've selected the slide back part here and I've that's under shrink wrap of course but I've also made sure that with point snapping on that wherever I can these points snap to these points here so everything's really really organized all the time keeping an eye on what's going on down here. 
See, I could possibly pull this down a little bit. But it's much better to leave this kind of thing to as late as possible when you're dealing with this kind of curvature because you can easily mess it up. And you know, this, these parts of this gun have been machined and any lumps and bumps in that will be a dead giveaway. So what I'll just quickly do is add in a few more, few more of these cuts and you can see the process. So I'll just add that one across here. Terminate that there. There we go. Turn that back on. And you can see that's got that lovely curvature because it's still under the shrink wrap. I don't have to worry about adding any lumps and bumps. Just make sure that it's right on. Yeah, that's sliding on there nicely. Just select my slide and just make sure this point is snapping to there as well. Yeah, that's snapping on, that's good. But it could be up a little bit higher. I can just snap this one up here like this. Like that. Better to make it as accurate as possible while it's still under the shrink wrap. And I've got one on the other side as well, just here. So I'll select that again. I can probably just do an edge loop like that rather than trying to cut it in manually. That's better. Okay, let's see how that snaps nicely to that curved surface that I've got in there. Select my slide. Make sure that that is also There. So I can move points around and I can be really inac inaccurate because I know that the shrink wrap is going to watch my back as far as the curvature goes. needs to be straight. And I have a couple of extra cuts in there. And it might even be worth me not even bothering taking those through the back. I could do something like this where I terminate those here like that. That way I've still got a quad here. And I could just dissolve those and just bring that back like that. I 
I do have that extra cut on this side and it, it could potentially change the shape of this just slightly, but I don't really think so. I don't think you think it's a big deal. I think you'd hardly even notice that. So turning the shrink wrap on and off, you can see what a difference that makes. Just make sure that everything is looking good. And like I say, keep that shrink wrap live until the very last moment. So there's another one there. Which I'll need to cut in. Have I got one on this side? Yeah, I've got one on that side as well. So. I'll just select that again, KL, just cut in a loop there, and here. See, I didn't know when I first set up this shrink wrap and this, uh, this curved area that I was going to have any extra loops. And if I had cut that in, or if I had um, collapsed that down, I would now be cutting in all these extra loops and flattening this out, and that would be really bad. So as you get better and better at modeling, you'll think ahead. Just like that. Just like I have here. It's all good. Make sure that snaps. Just like that. This one here is sitting out a little bit. Now one of them is not on the shrink wrap. But it seems to be okay there. Maybe not. Bring that up. They're pretty close. Maybe just bring this one back. This one's not quite doing what it should. It pays to go around and around a few times just to make sure everything is correct. There we go, that's better. So I can snap that to that point because I know that that's still under the shrink wrap. Now, while this is still under the shrink wrap, I just skipped ahead and I've gone and added all of the sharpening cuts you see this one here, here, here. And in some cases, I've just pulled in existing edges just to sharpen the corners. In other cases, I've had to add extra loops like this one here, just to, because I didn't have an actual loop there. And this is all still under the shrink wrap. It makes sense to add the sharpening cuts while it's still under shrink wrap because that way they can be included in the shrink wrap before I collapse that down. Just turn that back on. And you can see that pops that back out nicely. Just turn it off again. You can see the difference. So adding in all of the control cuts before I collapse the shrink wrap down just makes a lot of sense. So what I can also do now under shrink wrap is if I just select this outer loop, if I can get it, just by shift clicking on these loops, the 
This one here needs a cut. And now pressing UI to invert that selection. And I'm going to use uh, HB's relax script and just relax those polygons. I can probably pull pull these ones down a little bit. There's an extra one there. Just get rid of that. Just bring these down, just even them out a little bit. Just run that again. Now if I really want it to be really detailed, just bring this down and even that out. Now I could just grab that edge down to here and shift click down to there and run HB's even distribution just to evenly distribute those points. I could do the same here and the same here. Nice. And probably same here. Being careful not to grab these corner points. I just deselect that one. And that one and that one. And run it again. Probably could just grab those two. Like that. And once again, just relax that. And you can see it's beautifully smooth because it's still under that shrink wrap. So the next step would just be to collapse that down and you know, join that to the slide. And then just grab these edges in edge mode. Just grab these edges. I'll just turn the shrink back off for now. You know, and just extrude these back to add that internal face. Obviously, you know, these ones as well. And then just add the um, add the hammer. So I'm getting pretty close to finishing this project now. And I know it would have really annoyed me if I didn't have a beautiful smooth surface on this um, on this section here. Looking good. So hopefully that's been useful for now. This is John from MotionWorks.net. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in another tutorial.